Hello, my name is Steve. In this quick video, I'll be talking about an IP called the Reset Release Intel FPGA IP and why it's essential to implement in all Intel Stratix 10 and Intel Angelix designs. Here's the agenda that I'll be covering in this video. First, I'll give a bit of a background into how the Stratix 10 and Angelix devices are configured. Next, I'll talk about what happens with your design as the FPGAs are configuring and entering user mode. And lastly, I'll discuss the reset release Intel FPGA IP and how to instantiate it. The Intel Stratix 10 and Intel Agile X FPGAs are configured through the Secure Device Manager. The SDM is a microprocessor block that provides a robust, secure, and fully authenticated configuration scheme. The SDM sends configuration data to each sector in the FPGA where there is a microprocessor for each sector that minimally helps with the configuration of its respective sector. The configuration of sectors is done in a pseudo-serial fashion. Each sector starts its configuration asynchronously to each other which results in different areas of the sectors entering into user mode before the entire sector has been fully configured. This creates a condition where the intended initial state of the design becomes more of a transitory state since a portion of the sector is operational before the entire sector is configured. To further illustrate this point as it relates to your design, let's say you have a state machine. To guarantee correct operation of state machines, your reset logic must hold the FPGA fabric in reset until the entire fabric enters user mode. This one hot state machine design depends on registers entering an initial state. Without an adequate reset, the state machine begins operating when part of the device is active. Nearby logic included in the state machine remains frozen. Register B in the active section is operational and takes on the value of register A in the next clock cycle. Register A is still in the frozen section and does not respond to the clock edge. Register A remains in the current state. The entire fabric is now in user mode. The state machine enters an illegal or unknown state with two ones in a one hot state machine. The reset release IP is used to prevent this illegal state by holding the circuit in reset until init done asserts, indicating that the entire fabric has entered user mode. Designs with PLLs frequently use the PLL lock signal to hold the custom FPGA logic in reset until the PLL is locked. In newer Intel device families, the lock time of PLLs can be less than the configuration time. Consequently, if you use the locked output of the PLL to control resets in the Intel Stratix 10 or Intel Agix devices, you should get the PLL reset input with an init done from the reset release IP as shown in the figure. Another alternative, if you're using the PLL lock in your reset sequence, is to gate the PLL lock output with the N init done signal from the reset release IP. If initial conditions of the register are not specified, then the software tools will assign a zero to the registers as their initial condition. The initial condition of a register can be set with the VHDL and Verilog examples that you see here. However, Given the nature of the configuration process in the Intel Stratix 10 and Intel Agilex devices, it is recommended not to rely on initial conditions of the registers and rely on the reset network to maintain the desired initial condition. In general, it is good design practice to rely on X-propagation of uninitialized signals when simulating your design so that you can ensure a proper functioning reset network. To disable power-up initialization, Go to the Assignments menu in the Intel Core's Prime Pro software and select Device, Device and Pin Options, Configuration, and select Disable Register Power-Up Initialization checkbox. Finally, I'll talk about instantiating the Reset Release IP, which, as instantiations are concerned, is really simple. First, you'll need to locate the Reset Release Intel FPGA IP in the IP Catalog. Go through the process of creating your IP, selecting whether the interface is going to be a reset interface or a conduit interface, and then instantiate your IP. The shell codes shown here are examples of the reset release IP instantiation. Here's an example with the reset release IP instantiated along with the PLL. The example on the left shows the reset release IP holding the PLL in reset until the FPGA is fully configured. The lock signal of the PLL is then ORed with reset inputs so that the design in the FPGA will be reset whenever the PLL needs to be relocked or when the customer decides to reset the design. 
The example on the right is a slightly different configuration where an input reset will reset the PLL along with the design running in the FPGA. Here are a couple of VHL examples of the same instantiations that were previously presented in Verilog. Again, the example on the left shows the reset release IP holding the PLL in reset until the FPGA is fully configured. The lock signal of the PLL is then ORed with the reset input so that the design in the FPGA will reset whenever the PLL needs to be relocked or when the customer decides to reset the design. The example on the right is slightly different configuration where an input reset will reset the PLL along with the design running in the FPGA. To summarize, I went over the background and design implications which provide some context to the motivation of the reset release IP then talked about its instantiation. Thanks for listening. Thank you.